Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside Gaming. We've seen a growing number of time loop games lately. From Minute to Outer Wilds to 12 Minutes to Deathloop to whatever will be announced next. Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside Gaming. We've seen a growing number of time loop games lately. From Minute to Outer Wilds to 12 Minutes to Deathloop to whatever will be announced next. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Inside Gaming. We've seen a growing number of time loop games lately. From Minute to Outer Wilds to no, 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 no. I've been here before, there's only one way out of this. All right, I need you to kill me, please. I'm begging you, it's not bad, just, just make it quick, go. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to Inside Gaming. We've... Oh, okay, all right. Uh, I've been thinking a lot lately about how these time loop games approach death and how it relates to gaming in general. A death is the most fundamental fail state. The two have been intertwined and conflated to the point that it's hard to separate them. I died is all but a synonym for I failed, at least in video games. It makes sense. Death translates finality pretty effectively. It's recognized across time and cultures. Though in some parts of China, you can hire a professional whaler to really spice up your funeral, so they are miles ahead of us. All we have are just cheap Elvis impersonators. But for the most part, we're on the same page when it comes to death. We know what it means. Technically, Mortal Kombat could exist without anyone dying. The loser could just tap out and that's that. Shake hands, good game. Raiden's bomb brought orange slices. Kind of like that Chinese PUBG where enemies get up, wave, and run off after you shoot them down. It's kind of cute, actually. Uplifting. But that's not the point. Death in games like these is failure, and avoiding it until the end or beyond everyone else playing is how you win. Even in single-player games, a death is typically the result of failing to complete a task. A reminder that you're doing something wrong. In theory, if you follow the rules and understand the systems enough, you can avoid the death slash fail mechanic. But what about a game where death is unavoidable? Where no matter your actions, death comes at the same time? Is it still a fail state then? And this is the point in the video where we get to talk about Outer Wilds. No, no, not Obsidian's The Outer Worlds, it's Outer Wilds. Yes, they're similar, I made the same mistake too, but this is the indie space exploration game from Mobius Digital and Annapurna Interactive. And as you might have heard on this channel, it's very, very good. There's a lot to love in this game, notably the way it handles player death. The gameplay takes place in 22 minute cycles. It all ends with a sun going supernova, obliterating everything in its path, including you. When the sun began to glow and implode, I knew I had no choice but to put down whatever I was doing and accept what was about to happen. Maybe it was the music or the generally plucky attitude the game conveys, but for the most part, I found death in the game to be deeply satisfying. Like, I'd done all I could, and it was time to just go home. It sounds sappy, but it's a testament to the atmosphere the game creates. Hey, hey, hey atmosphere, I made a space pun. And I'm smart, and I play smart people games, like Outer Wilds, where you get to toast a marshmallow, watch Sun Go Supernova, and listen to banjos. Congratulations! Indie games are great, and although it would occasionally take me away from some new discovery before I would have liked, I'd wake up at the beginning of a new cycle with a clear objective in my mind, as if the forced death gave me this push to go and explore even more. Motivating the player through frustrating deaths goes all the way back to the early days of gaming, though it wasn't always the positive type of experience I've had with Outer Wilds. It was the 80s, a time of radical soda experiments, anti-communist sentiment, and arcade cabinets as far as the eye could see. Coca-Cola is it? Damn, some of those fuckers were really hard. Fail states were implemented in all of these games, and they were often extremely punishing, both by circumstance and by design. A large part of game design is making the player feel like they're progressing forward through a game. Challenge a player enough, and a sense of earned momentum is created. Within arcade games, though, progress couldn't be kept. It wasn't your game. The temporary all-or-nothing nature of arcade games meant death acted as a hard reset. But arcade developers also knew how to tap into the magical force that is insulting gamers, because God knows we got that pride. The whole system relied on getting players to shrug off failure and try again, and if they were mad, they'd probably do it again and again, pumping quarters to earn approval from a wooden box with a TV in it. More likely to get it from that than my dad. Love you, dad. Uh, that's how we got characters like Sinistar yelling, Run, coward. Or Street Fighter 2's Guile telling you to go home and be a family man. Oh, or like Mortal Kombat 2, like Shao Kahn just saying, You fuck. Awesome. I love how in that time, loving and caring for your family made you weak. What a fun set of priorities. You just gotta go out and whoop ass in the street. Or beat up some dude's car. That's better than being an attentive dad. I learned my lesson well. Anyway, we have save files now, but fail states are still a central part of gaming. If anything, checkpoints and saved progress can justify even more challenging games. 
Some have called for an end to fail states in linear story-based games because they're seen as immersion-breaking, which... Uh, yeah, that can certainly be frustrating to be told that you've failed even though you're trying your best. But death and fail states are incredibly useful, and unfortunately the presence of a story doesn't erase the need for reliable progression mechanics. Death in video games has come to mean so many things. A reset, punishment, a lesson that needs to be learned. And many games have found compromises in keeping fail states by putting innovative spins on them to smooth out the immersion. Sands of Time would rewind time, and VO would say something along the lines of, that's not how it happened, and is like weirdly British accent. Uh, Bioshock's Vita Chambers would generate a new body for you. Borderlands has new use stations, and Destiny's whole deal is that the light of the Traveler keeps Guardians coming back for more. Which is why it was such a big deal when Dominus Gaul cut the Guardians off from the light, and when Cade Six Ghost was shot by one of Aldrin's solves Barons in the opening to Forsaken, separating him from his... No, no, I will not get into Destiny lore. Another topic for another video. But many time loop games are embracing death. Rather than writing in a story loophole that allows for the player character to die endlessly, death in these games is what it is. I mean, yes, it's kind of a story loophole that allows for the player character to die endlessly, but this is different, I swear, because unlike typical games, these games are less about going as long as you can without dying as much as they are, seeing what can be accomplished before the inevitable death. In many games, the existence of a fail state draws focus to just one part, you know, a particular enemy, a single platform, a boss you can't beat, something like that. Of course, that's a blanket statement, different games are different games, which you can't quote me on that, by the way. But that's the kind of pain point that could completely turn someone off of a game. I've fallen off of plenty of games because of one specific enemy or area or jump, or whatever. It's fine line developers walk, knowing exactly how much pressure to apply to the player. Not enough, and a fail state will feel completely inconsequential, but too much, and they risk pushing them away completely. Yes, a lot of what makes exploration in Outer Wilds feel so satisfying are the competent flight controls and the smartly designed solar system, but it's also the result of the inevitable deaths not feeling like failure. It would have been very difficult to keep throwing myself at the mystery the game was presenting if dying every 22 minutes made me feel shitty. Instead, Mobius managed to make constant death feel... okay? which is not exclusive to just this game. Into the Breach, another terrific time loop title handled it a little differently in that you had to choose one character to send back in the event of a fail state. Though I definitely felt a bit more responsible for death in that game, the inclusion of the added time mechanics softened the blow a little. In addition, the game Minute sounds by all means like an impossible task. Play an entire game in one minute increments? Yet, it worked. I'm excited to see what 12 minutes in Deathloop bring to what I guess you could loosely call a genre now. Two games that couldn't look more different and yet they're linked by this handling of death. And no, no, I'm not gonna do an entire video about time loop games and not mention Majora's Mask, okay? Possibly the best known example of using a limited time cycle to justify exploring a setting again and again. Even though the player is subject to a short span of time for every cycle, the fact that the cycle will repeat again and 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 again makes it so the player has equal time to delve into every corner of the game equally. Because in gaming, a fail state is not actual failure. You're not really failing, you're learning the systems of the game. And the game uses this to reinforce the rules. As I've said, these games are not the first to present new takes on dying and fail states in games, but they package the familiar game mechanic in a way that makes it feel different than any experience before it. And that deserves noting. It's what we're about here. Gaming history, gaming culture, Inside Gaming. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Yeah, our our Outer Wilds, it's been in the works for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, you saw it a while ago, right? I first, I think it first got put on my radar in like 2017, I think it came out around during E3. Not out, but um, I remember seeing the trailer and I was immediately like, oh, hold on, this is exactly my thing. Because it's space, it's